Chapter 38 The Tale of Phileas, the Gnome Illusionist Rogue Phileas, Gnome Illusionist Rogue with light brown hair and deep blue-green eyes, height 3 feet 6 inches, weight 90 pounds, age 126, place of birth the village of Farron, about 70 miles northeast of the village of Duran. This is the tale of Phileas. Phileas grew up in the village of Farron with his father and his two mothers, as his father had two wives, along with his older brother Gilius, his two younger brothers Dilius and Bilius, an older sister named Gilius, and a younger sister named Lilius. They lived on a small farm and they all worked in the village doing various jobs, working in shops, or helping other families with various jobs. There was only one other family of gnomes in Farron, along with a couple of dwarves, halflings, and elves. The rest were all humans, but everyone got along reasonably well, and life was good. Phileas's favorite day, though, was the last day of each year, for on that day, gnomes held a great festival in many villages throughout Forestera that lasted from sunrise to sunset. Each year his family would travel to the closest village where the festival was being held, and sometimes it was held in Farron. The festival was called Forestera's Fate, for it was a celebration of all that had happened to them that year. On that day, gnomes came from all over and spent the day celebrating life and all that it had to offer. All were welcome to attend, and many who weren't gnomes went to the festival but it consisted mostly of gnomes. And all the shops that were set up were also done by gnomes, though others often helped work there. Many gnomes were lovers of stories and suffered from wanderlust, more so than the other races. So once a year, they gathered to meet new people, as well as old friends and acquaintances, and share stories and talk about life. Short books were brought and read, and then they'd all sit around and talk about what they just read, while also sharing all that happened in their life that year. The entire day was spent talking, playing music, dancing, telling stories, reading stories, listening to stories, talking about stories they read as well as heard, and talking about the life that they were living and all that had happened to them that year. Everyone was always sad when night came, but everyone also couldn't wait to see everyone again one year later. All of his brothers and sisters had gotten married and had kids. Gilius had two wives, and Gilius married a gnome who had another wife. For it wasn't all that uncommon for a male gnome to have two wives, and sometimes more. While the other races all found it odd, most accepted it as just a gnome custom, but many grew up with no knowledge that some gnomes had multiple wives, and sometimes it became a problem. But for the most part, it wasn't. On Phileas's 100th birthday, his family made him the focus of their celebration at the festival, which just happened to be in Farron that year. They made him the focus, not because he was still single, but simply because he had turned 100 years old. So that year was a special celebration for Phileas. But little did he know that the Forestera Fate Festival that year would change his life forever. Genevieve. Hi, Phileas. Did you hear? A master illusionist is here, and he's going to speak soon. Some say he's going to teach some people how to do magic and become illusionists for free. They say he never charges anyone because he's wealthy and no longer needs to make any money, and that all he wants to do now is help people. I'm so excited, I can't wait to meet him. Phileas, hi Genevieve. My, you're looking pretty today. Genevieve blushed, but smiled. They both had a crush on each other but were both somewhat shy when it came to expressing their feelings for each other. They weren't shy about much else, though, for the most part. Gnomes loved to talk, especially when speaking to a group of people, but Genevieve just loved talking in general, but was shy when it came to telling Phileas how, mu how much she liked him and wanted to marry him. Phileas, while he often tried to express interest in her, was somewhat shy in the dating department, too which is partly why he was still single after so many years. Genevieve. Thanks. Do you want to come listen to him? 
He's going to be speaking on that stage over there in just a little while. Phileas, sure, let's go. They went over to the stage and found a couple seats that were near the front. Genevieve, I'm so excited. I've always wanted to become an illusionist, but it's really hard to learn. I'm hoping he can help me. How about you? You always said that you wanted to be one too. Maybe he can teach us both. Phileas, well, if you and I could study together and with him, that would be a dream come true. Genevieve smiled, but blushed again and looked awkward, not knowing what to say, but then spoke. I'd really like that. Phileas, smiling now. Really? I wasn't really sure. You always seem to get nervous when I try to tell you that I like you. I thought maybe you weren't interested in anything other than just being friends. Genevieve, now looking more nervous and awkward. Oh, well, I... I guess you're right. I often get nervous when... I mean... Phileas, do you mean that you get nervous when talking about your feelings for me? Because you have feelings for me? Genevieve, I... I guess so. I'm sorry. I mean... Yes, I do. I just get really nervous and don't know what to say. Phileas, you just said it, he said, smiling. You like me. Well, if you haven't noticed, I really like you too. And I want to be with you more often, if you know what I mean. Genevieve, oh, I'm sorry. I just get really nervous when, I mean, Phileas, when you're with someone that you really like and want to be with. Genevieve, still looking awkward and shy. Yes, I don't know why I get so nervous. Phileas, I think that's partly why I like you. Genevieve, okay. Genevieve couldn't believe that's all she said, but he understood and reached over and held her hand. When his hand touched hers, she got very nervous and started to shake a little. Phileas, how about tomorrow you and I spend the day together? Genevieve, okay. The gnome master illusionist walked out onto the stage and quickly people took their seat. Illusionist, greetings to my fellow gnomes and all of you other races out there who desire to become wizards or illusionists or just magicians. My name is Nightshade. I am a master illusionist and I have come here today to invite you all to come to my school of magic to learn how to do magic tricks and to see if any of you possess the ability to learn how to cast actual magical spells. Very few have such a gift, but my school is free, so all are welcome, though I do take donations to help with the costs that are involved. But if you lack money, or even if you don't, you are all most welcome to come learn. Anyone can learn how to do magic, and if you practice a lot, you could become a great magician. But what I am really hoping to find are those few individuals who have within them the power to cast real magic. But as great as magic is, it can also be dangerous. Some wizards have lost their minds, and a few became evil, because the power is so great that some just can't handle it. Only with my training will you be able to see if you are one of those few, and be better guarded against the magic and the power that could consume you. I have devoted my life to teaching magic and training people who have the gift. I will be in your village for one week, and then I head out down the road to wherever the wind and fate take me. But now, let me show you a few fun magic tricks. Nightshade held some cards in his hand and then shifted them, and they just disappeared. The crowd gasped, but then he moved his hands again, and they were back. More gasps. Nightshade. Now you might think that I made those cards actually disappear and then reappear, but I didn't. It was just a trick that involves sleight of hand. Now I'm going to do it very slowly so you can see how I did it. The crowd watched as Nightshade showed how he moved the cards behind his hands and then into a little pocket he had in his sleeve and how he'd reach in and pull them out. Then he did it fast again and the cards seemed to just disappear and no one could figure out how he did it, even though he just showed them how he did it. So he showed them again, and then did it a little faster, and then a little faster, and then a little faster. Genevieve, I want to be able to do that. Phileas, it's not magic. 
He's just really good at sleight of hand. I can do it a little, but not nearly as good as he does. But I'm getting better. How about we go study with him? Genevieve, excited now. Really? You really want to? Phileas, well, on one condition. Genevieve, confused now. What? Phileas, that you come with me and we study together, but not just tomorrow or the next day, but for the rest of our lives. Phileas leaned in and kissed her on her cheek. Genevieve got very nervous and wasn't sure how to react, so she just froze. But Phileas was finally starting to figure her out. Phileas, I'm going to take your response as a yes, he said, smiling. Genevieve just sat there, looking at Nightshade. But then she smiled, but then she smiled too. One week later, Nightshade, I want you both to know that you both have great potential to become great illusionists. You both clearly have the gift, a gift that very few have. I leave tomorrow. Come with me. I am a very wealthy man. You will never lack for anything ever again. And with my help, you will both, in time, become great illusionists. Phileas and Genevieve just looked at each other, not sure what to say. Phileas, may we go speak with our families first and then get back to you? Nightshade, of course. I'll see you later tonight or tomorrow morning sometime. Just don't wait. Just don't make me wait too long, okay? He said, smiling. Phileas, we won't. Thank you, Genevieve. Oh my, Phileas, I've never been so excited in all my life. We have to go with him. We're going with him, right? Phileas, absolutely. I just thought we should let our families know first and give them some time to prepare for us leaving. But this isn't the most excited I've ever been in my life. Genevieve now looked at Phileas curiously. Phileas, the most excited I've ever been was the day I met you. Genevieve smiled, then leaned in quickly and kissed him. Genevieve, I can't believe how quickly we've fallen in love. Then again, I fell in love with you the day I saw you. There was just something about you when you spoke. I somehow just knew that you were the one for me. I just wasn't sure if I was the one for you. Phileas, you silly girl, don't you know? Genevieve just looked at him again, curiously. Phileas, I fell in love with you in that same moment. Guess I just didn't make it obvious. Guess we both were a little cautious. But now there's no doubt. You are my love, and I can't wait to travel to all the different villages with you and meet new people and see the world. Nightshade said that in a few months, he's going to travel east into the hills and eventually we'll go see Yolo's house that, he, that they turned into a museum. Genevieve, really? That's so exciting. I can't wait to see his home and his books. I kind of want to become a bard too, like Yolo was. But we've got hundreds of years to learn. Let's become master illusionists first. Then we can become bards. Phileas, so do it in reverse. Genevieve, huh? Phileas, the few gnomes who have the gift usually don't train to become illusionists until later in life. Most become rogues or warriors or bards. It's only a few who become clerics or druids or illusionists. I also want to be a rogue. The thought of being an illusionist rogue just excites me. Gen Genevieve, me too. I've always wanted to learn the skills of the rogue. But now, knowing that I, I can also become an illusionist too, it's just amazing to think about it. Phileas, I know. I can't wait. But there's one more reason why I wanted to go tell our families first. Phileas waited to see the look on her face, to see if she knew where he was going with this, but she appeared to have no clue what Phileas was going to say next. Phileas, I want us to get married now, in front of our families, before we head out for our new life together. Genevieve was beside herself with joy and jumped on Phileas, knocking him over. She started kissing him all over, and then they started tickling each other and wrestling and kissing. Genevieve, Phileas, you have made me more happy than I've ever been, and I don't mean to upset you or anything, but there's something that I need to discuss with you before we get married, something that I believe is very important. Phileas, okay, what is it? Genevieve, 
My parents told me many times the story of how they met and got married. They said how before they got married, how they sat with each other and discussed this. So I want to do that now with you. Phileas, that sounds great. Discuss what? Genevieve, they said that they talked about what they'd want the other person to do if one of them ever died. Phileas looked a little shocked at what Genevieve just said. <clears throat> Genevieve, <clears throat> they both agreed that if one of them died, that, that they'd want the, the other to continue on with their life and even marry if they found someone else. But the one thing that they didn't want the other to do was to lose their mind and give up on life. They didn't want their death to ruin the other's life. So they swore their own vows, their own vow before they got married, that when the other died, that they'd mourn, obviously, but then they'd keep going, keep living, and never quit, no matter what. So right now, Phileas, I want you to know that if you were to die at some point, that I will, somehow, some way, find the strength to go on, because I know that that's what you'd want me to do. I know that because that's what I'd want you to do. Phileas, hugging Genevieve, I could never handle losing you. Genevieve, no. If you die, say 400 years from now, what would you want me to do? Would you want me to quit and lose my mind? Or kill myself, maybe? Phileas, no, of course not. I'd want you to, oh, I see what you mean. Okay, then. Phileas looked into Genevieve's eyes. I promise that if at some point in our beautiful life together that you should die before I do, that I will, what did you say? Somehow, some way? Genevieve, smiling, yes. Phileas, I promise that I will, somehow, some way, find the strength to go on and keep living, no matter what. Genevieve leaned in and kissed Phileas and then hugged him. Genevieve, I never want to be without you, but if I ever lose you, I promise I'll keep going. Phileas, you already promised, he said, laughing. Genevieve, well, now I double promised. So now you have to double promise, she said, laughing. Phileas, okay, you silly girl, I double promise. Genevieve and Phileas were married that day, and the next day they set out with Nightshade to study magic and see the world. One month later, Darrington, Genevieve, you have nothing to be afraid of. I won't hurt you. I would never hurt you. I love you. I want you. Come be with me now. Genevieve. Darrington, I thought we were friends. Why are you acting like this now? I'm with Phileas. You know that. You and I will never be anything more than friends. So just stop now. Darrington. Okay, Genevieve. I'm sorry for the way I'm behaving, but I've fallen in love with you. I'm consumed by you. All I do all day long is think about you, about how wonderful my life would be if you were mine. Darrington had achieved the fifth progression as an illusionist. He was Nightshade's best student by far, and often helped the other students by mentoring them one-on-one. -on -one. Genevieve, well, I belong to Phileas and he with me. We're soulmates, Darrington. I like you as a friend. Can you be okay with that? Darrington, of course, he said, smiling. I'm glad that you and I have become friends. Genevieve, smiling now. Great. We'll see you tomorrow in class. Isn't Nightshade just an amazing teacher? Darrington, yes, he is. He's taught me a lot, he said, smiling. See you tomorrow, Genevieve. Genevieve got up to leave the tent where they were studying together. She had studied with him before, and there was never any issue. He had become a good friend to both her and Phileas, but now something had changed and she was concerned. But she felt that everything was going to be okay now, now that she was able to explain to him how things were going to be. If only she knew he had a crush on her from the beginning, but she never thought that he'd do anything like what he was about to do. As Genevieve walked away, Darrington cast charm person on her, hoping she wouldn't realize. Darrington, oh Genevieve, wait, come and sit down next to me. I need to tell you something. Genevieve walked over and sat down next to him. Genevieve, what is it? Darrington, this is going to sound weird, but just trust me, okay? Genevieve, okay. 
Darrington. If you want things to become great with you and Phileas, you need to start kissing me immediately. It's really important. Genevieve. Okay. She started kissing Darrington. A moment later, and Darrington lost control. He started to take off Genevieve's clothes. At that moment, Genevieve somehow snapped out of the magic that had taken control of her mind. She slapped Darrington hard. Genevieve, not speaking quietly. What do you think you're doing? Darrington, scared and panicking now. Shut up, fool. You want others to hear us? Genevieve got up and started to leave. Darrington, thinking silently to himself, Well, if I can't have you, then no one can. He grabbed Genevieve, pulled out his dagger, and before she knew what was happening, he slit her throat. Shocked at what he had just done, his mind fell into a pit. Darrington laid down next to Genevieve and took hold of her hand with his. Life with you didn't turn out how I planned. Let's see how death with you will turn out. Darrington took his dagger and slit his throat. Sheila. Hello, Genevieve. My name is Sheila, and I am the goddess of Forestera. I'm so sorry for what happened to you. I very much wanted to see you and Phileas live a long and beautiful life together. But sadly, fate had other plans. But I do have some good news for you. Genevieve was quite confused, not fully understanding where she was, let alone that she had died. But then two gnomes appeared next to Sheila, and immediately her state of confusion turned into a state of shock. Sheila continued, This is your god, Sagojan, Earthcaller, god of the earth and nature, and this gnome deity is called Berevar Cloakshadow, god of illusions, protection, and deception. Darrenden is in Berevar's domain now, so you don't have to worry about him. Berevar will help him and guide him, and who knows, maybe one day you two can talk again. That is, when you want to and you're both ready. For now, though, these two want to speak to you. Segojin Earthcaller. Greetings, Genevieve. You have nothing to fear. Your future with Phileas has ended for now. But fate is not through with you two yet. For now, though, you have quite a few relatives in my domain that are anxious to meet you. A few are in other domains, too, but you will be able to see them and even visit them at times. In time, you will learn how it all works. Berevar Cloak Shadow. Hello, Genevieve. I have great interest in your Phileas, as does Segojan, obviously. So I wanted to meet you now. Thank thankfully, Segojan has allowed me to do so. So hello, and welcome to the realm of Forestera below. I look forward to getting to know you better over time. And luckily, time is something that we all have plenty of. Sheila. I am also interested in your Phileas. In time, I will show you what my plans for him are. Don't worry, though. By plans, I don't mean to control him in any way or make him do something. I only guide and help people find their path. One path that I have for Phileas is great, if he desires it. In time, we will see which path he chooses for himself. But I am quite optimistic that he will follow the path that I have for him. I just wish it could have included you, too. There are so few female gnome adventurers, she said, smiling. But now I want to show you a way in which you can help your soulmate. Don't worry. I'll guide you through it and answer all your questions, and then you can decide what you want to do. Sheila. Okay, Genevieve. He's dreaming now, so you can talk to him if you'd like. Don't worry, I'll help keep him calm. And just so you remember, I don't know how long it will be before you can speak to him like this again, though I'm sure you'll be in his dreams for a very long time, regardless. Genevieve. Hi, Phileas. Oh, there you are. I was wondering where you were. Genevieve. Phileas, do you remember the promises that we made to each other? Phileas. Of course. How could I forget? You made me double promise, remember? Genevieve, yes, I remember. Well, I just wanted to tell you how much I love you and that no matter what happens, we will be together for all eternity. We're soulmates. 
That means there is nothing that can separate us forever. Phileas, smiling now, that's great. I'm so glad that we'll never be apart. Genevieve, Phileas, I know this is very hard for you, but hear me. We are apart now, but just for now. One, one day, you and I will be together again. I don't know when that will happen, but that day could be a very long time from now. So while we're apart, you need to keep your promise to me and live your life and find the happiness and joy that life has to offer you. But it's up to you. All I can promise you is that you and I will be together again one day. But until that day comes, you need to keep living. If you were where I am and I was where you are, you would say the exact same thing to me. I love you and I always will. And I can't wait until we're together again. Goodbye, my love. Phileas, goodbye. Phileas opened his eyes and just started to cry. The year is 996. It's the last day of the year. And the gnomes all over Forestera are celebrating Forestera's fate festival. Phileas, sitting on the grass by himself, looking at a beautiful drawing of him and Genevieve that was done on the day they were married. Hello, my love. I miss you so much. I guess I always will, no matter what happens. But I have some most interesting news that I wanted to share with you. I'm about to go adventuring. It's been a long time. I still remember when you came to me in my dream, the night I lost you. I can't believe I'm still alive. I guess I have you to thank for that, at least in part, for I don't know if I could have gone on had you not come to me that night and spoke to me. I, rem I remember it like it was yesterday, so clear in my mind. The pain was indescribable, yet here I am, happy again. So I'm hoping that makes you happy too. I sure hope so. It's really hard trying to be happy without you in my life. But I, but I had to do it. Not only because I knew that you wanted me to, but I knew that I needed to. And now I'm about to go adventuring. Adventuring with seven other people who have all become my friends. I wish you could see them. They're all wonderful. But guess what? I'm the only gnome, he said laughing. Can you believe it? I haven't told any of them about you. I'm not sure why. I guess I don't want them feeling sorry for me, let alone how much pain it might cause them to hear it. But maybe I'll tell them one day. I want to, because I want everyone to know all about the wonderful girl that I was married to, he said, smiling. I just need to wait until the right time to tell them comes along. I don't know what's going to happen, but just the fact that I found this group is a miracle in itself. I sure hope you can hear me. 26 years later, and I feel like my life is just now starting up again. All I can say is, I promise I'll keep going, no matter what happens. But I'm not saying goodbye. So, I'll see you again. Sometime. Phileas kissed the picture of her, then got up and walked back to where he was staying in the village with an illusionist he met who had been training him for the past several months. Today they were, they were going to all meet for dinner at the tavern and talk about where they'd go adventuring first. Phileas was really looking forward to tomorrow. For the first time in 26 years, he finally felt alive again. Thank mm -hmm. you.